around my story. Hello, my name is Kate. Now I'm going to say this. I am by no means a saint. And the only reason I brought this up is later in the story. So, I dated this guy in high school for two years. He was the love of my life, and I planned on marrying him. His dad became super controlling, and eventually he forced us to break up. He immediately got into a relationship with another girl, and I moved on. Later on, I met this guy who, um, we will call Max, and he was a mix between country and scene. He liked artists like Lil Peep, and also was in love with horses. He had a girlfriend who lived across the country, but we stayed friends. They eventually broke up, and naturally we both grew closer. Dear God, I regret ever saying yes to going out with him. The first two months, they were constant fighting. He wanted us to visit his ex-girlfriend because she was failing college and addicted to coke while we were together. He would sometimes text her while he was at my house or while we were at dinner, but eventually he quit. The next few months were okay at best. He would constantly start fights with my male friends and even assumed I was cheating on him with one friend who at the time did have a crush on me. But I'm a very loyal person who went as far as to put more of my time into hanging out with my boyfriend than my friends. Eventually, we went on a cruise and he got high with a group of girls and kissed one of them. I cut it off and went on to date others. So, he texted me three months after breaking up, saying he wants to talk and apologize for what he did. I was still in love with him, so I agreed and we set up a time for when he could come over. I knew instantly when he pulled into my driveway that I was going to regret ever responding. There was no hug. No, I miss you. None of that. Instead, he walks up to me, looks me in the eye and says, I want to get this out of the way. I've dated a lot of people since we broke up. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. I mean, I did the same when we broke up. So, I kind of agreed to being just friends and never go back to talking about getting back together for now. But then comes the bullshit. He calls me one night and says, Hey, I want to get back with you, because honestly, wandering around is boring, and I don't want to jump into things instantly, and I was wondering if dating without labels would be okay with you. When I asked him to elaborate, he replied, as in, I can still go to dinner with other girls, you can go to dinner with other guys, and we'll see what happens. Needless to say, I hung up without saying a word, told him thanks, but no thanks. You are not who you used to be, and I'm not interested anymore. Bonus chapter. He stopped a few weeks, but he would periodically send me pictures of him at parties or on dates with other girls or pictures of his private areas. Anyways, ever since he has been blocked on everything, but I just thought I would share this with you. This is a shout out to every girl out there. Please find someone that's worth your love and affection, not someone who wants to play with it. Hi, I am Ralph. I am 19 years old. I have simple secret that I like my mother. Don't judge me, just listen to my story. I had a quiet family, kind mother and loving father. We had stable lives in our far state. But as you know, there is no place for happy life in our world. There was the turning point in life, and it came quickly with me. It was a nice day in our garden, me, my mother, and my father. My father was sitting under a tree reading a book. Me and my mother were playing football. Suddenly, mom overshot and the ball went into the street. I was too young to think, I just ran quickly to pick the ball. There was a fast car. The driver was screaming at me, stay away, but I did not. My mother sacrificed herself to rescue me. I fainted and when I woke up, I saw my mother's blood everywhere. My father was crying. There were a lot of people. Our lives changed to be gloomy. He was surrounding me by many looks. I thought he blamed me because of her death. He was so sad. I left my friends. I did not talk with people. I was just eight years old. I was thinking of killing myself. 
I would like to escape from this plane. Suddenly, my father decided to marry. I shocked because I could not imagine any other woman instead of my mother at home. He said in a firm voice, She will be at home soon. He asked me to be a good boy. I entered my room and started crying. I could not imagine. But I decided to annoy her. When she prepared food, I immediately threw it. Her only reaction was a kind smile. While my father was staying at home, I insisted by bothering her by doing a lot of noisy things. My father was shouting and she always protected me. I said to myself, maybe she is a good woman and she loves me. One time, while she was cooking, she had a phone call from the hospital. It was an urgent matter. I was watching TV. She came in to me and said, Ralph, my sister is in the hospital and I have to go. Can you take care of cooking? I did not care. She smiled and went out. I went to the kitchen and turned up the heat to burn the food. But the fire did not just burn the food, it started to burn home too. There was fire everywhere. I could not breathe. Then I fainted. I woke up, but I did not know where am I. I looked around and saw my stepmother sleeping. She looked exhausted, and there was cinder on her face. Suddenly the door opened and I discovered that I was in the hospital. The nurse said, get well soon. I asked her what happened. She told me that there was a big fire at our home and my mother is a brave woman. She entered home and rescued me in the last moment. I looked at her, I discovered that she is a great woman. She woke up suddenly and asked me, are you okay? I hugged her and cried. I said, sorry for everything. She said, it is okay, I can understand. I considered her my mother. I started to help her in everything at home. She helped me a lot. I supported her a lot until her last illness. Today, I'm standing in her gravesite. I want to tell her that I love her a lot. Hey, my name is Rachel. In high school, the homecoming dance was coming up. I happened to confine that I had a crush on a popular guy to another girl in my class. Unbeknownst to me, they were very, very good friends and this girl offered to put in a good word for me. The next day she told me my crush would totally say yes if I asked him. So in between periods, I found my crush in the hallway, asked him to the homecoming dance, and he said yes. Well, homecoming is on Saturday. Today is Thursday. My crush, his friend, and I, we went to lunch together and I offered to pay in the hopes that this will make them like me even more. And yes, I was that bad. They tell me they want two bags of chips, burgers, fries, and two small cartons of chocolate milk? No problem. I go to the cafeteria and get those items like a boss. For some reason, I decided to jog over to them, even though that really only shaves off like, what, 10 minutes from my trip? But I still did it. I had two bags of chips in my mouth, one in my hand with a burger and fries, the other hand with two cartons of chocolate milk. They are sitting in the common area. The common area is carpeted, parallel to the cafeteria which had a tile floor. These rooms are separated by a relatively small metal line on the floor. And as I meet that line, my left foot catches on the metal. No problem, I have another foot. I will just swing that foot forward real quick and save this. But no, the other foot also catches. As I fall straight forward, I try to catch myself with my hands. Well, one hand had the chocolate milk in it, which just burst out, sending chocolate milk in every single direction. My other hand didn't help me either. It slipped on the burger in the bag and the fries go all over the place. The last thing to break my fall was actually my own face. The face with two bags of potato chips in my mouth. You know those jokes about chips bags being full of air? Well, they're actually true. As my face collided with the ground, both the bags of chips exploded at the same exact time and it sounded like a gunshot. Somehow one of my shoes just flew off. I tried to melt into the ground and fade out of existence for a moment and this happened at the meeting point of the common room and the cafeteria. 
So everyone in both rooms either saw or heard this fiasco and looked over. About a hundred students. It's deadly silent for a couple of seconds and then comes the laughter. And dear god the laughter. It was like a jet engine. Every person there was laughing the hardest they have ever laughed in their whole lives. I even saw the janitor doubled over laughing, bracing himself with a mop handle. A teacher was trying to walk over to help me, but she stopped every couple of feet to use her whole body to laugh at me. All of this happens not 10 feet away from the table in which my crush and his friends were sitting. Everyone is having a great laugh, but my crush has the greatest laugh of all. He has fallen to the ground, with one hand bracing himself on his knees, the other hand is clutched at his ribs as he laughs so hard that no sound comes out. He was wheezing like a dolphin. There is no recovery from this. I walk to the bathroom to clean myself up. The teacher could only manage to hand me my shoe along the way and continue laughing. In the bathroom, the laughter did not die at all for what seemed like a lifetime. When the bell rang, I was still in the bathroom and people were still laughing. While I spent the whole day wallowing in easily the most embarrassing moment of my life, I thought, well, maybe, maybe I'm just a funny girl and he will like it. The next morning, I see my crush before class and he walks up to me and he says, So homecoming is tomorrow. Eager not to speak about the shit show that happened yesterday, I just excitedly said, Yes, yes it is. And then he delivers a crisp and says um so this girl that i actually like asked me to go to the dance with her so i think i'm gonna go to which i replied um ah yeah that makes sense i totally did not go in the bathroom and cry after that anyways my crush said he will go to homecoming with me the day before, I tripped with his lunch and face planted into a pool of random ingredients in front of the entire class. My crush did not go to the homecoming dance with me. I have drank and I've used drugs, but I've never suffered from withdrawals. I've never chosen drugs or alcohol over my loved ones. And I have never stolen anything in order to score. I'm not an addict, but I love one. And sometimes, that's an addiction. Like so many other teens and young adults, I experimented with my fair share of recreational drugs and alcohol in high school. So when my younger sister started doing the same thing when she was 14, I wrote off her new habits as reckless, youthful behavior. She would grow out of this phase eventually, I thought, just like I did. But instead of getting worried with the lifestyle and moving on, she craved more of it. And by the time she was 19, the party drugs she was using were not even enough for her. And that's when she found heroin. One of the first things that gave away her addiction was her eyes. Usually big and blue and full of light. They became dark and dodgy orbs that could never quite focus. Never look you back. Never hold your gaze. The look I had once found in them was long gone, and I felt uneasy whenever our eyes met, which, as she began to use more, became less and less frequent. As drugs became a bigger part of her life, 